Be sure to watch this when you have time because there's a lot to be shared. Today I'm going to share with you the secret, well actually my secret of how to fall in love with journaling. That is the number one question I get asked on my social media platforms is how can I journal like you? How can I get started? And what is the trick to remaining consistent with the journaling process? So let's go ahead and dive in. I'll share with you my tips and tricks. The first process I would say is get a book that you are going to love. Yes, connection and attraction is key, okay? So that connection in turn is going to turn into a strong bond. And I'll give you an example. This notebook is the exact same size as this okay different brand but same size so while i would say size does matter it also depends on the material that is used within your notebook or journal in the past old me i would have loved a hardcover sometimes in the past i used to like the spiral spine so that is kind of the homework that you need to do is find a notebook or journal that you will connect and reach for the feeling the texture connection is key. What do you connect with? Okay. But here is a before, uh, the before process of a notebook that I connect with. And here is, let me show you the after. Okay. Big difference. So here with the soft cover for me, I enjoyed this because it allowed me to bulk up the pages. So keep that in mind. Connection is key. A couple things you want to think about is, you know, how you're going to use the notebook. That was key for me. How you're going to use it and how often. So the reason why this notebook is very chunky and the reason why I went with this is because um, I knew that I wanted to journal in this like almost every day. How I plan on using it was I was going to make this a daily journal, an art journal, a sketchbook, a brain dump, everything all in one. Sometimes it was a planner. So that is one of my hows. And then how often would be typically and ideally every day. Therefore, that's why I needed this particular version. This is the Moleskin Expanded. I'll leave it linked down below. But one thing I love about it is that it has 400 pages. So think about the connection, and then also how often you're going to use it and how you intend on using it. My next tip would be make your journal yours. I mean, it is your journal. It is your fun escape. So make it fun, make it unique. Um, being that is, it is your personal notebook, you know, don't be afraid to add personal touches. I'll show you some examples. This is the very first time that I actually I would say bonded with my journal and you can see that it started slowly but surely I personalized it adding a sticker got some tape on or not tape um, paint on here unintentionally and then I even labeled it to make it mine I added some clips on here and then if you want you can even stamp it I mean <laughs> I'm glad I did this because when I look at this, it reminds me of all the things that happened in 2019. And I think we can relate to that. Truth be told, that is where my deep bond of um, journaling really began. Um, this was the first time I actually finished a notebook in this size so quickly, within a year. So that is something that made this journaling process fun was personalizing it oh wow i forgot about this paint personalizing it and not being afraid to actually use it once i got comfortable with this one then the next one continued the paint the stickers um you know the page flags and just in time you get to know what you like and it becomes a fun and exciting process but also I do want to note that you don't have to spend money on things to accessorize your notebook or your journal. These stickers I did not pay for. They were stickers that I found in my everyday life on packages, on boxes, on mail. So here we are. This was from when I took flights. Okay. I took, um, air travel and kept these, put that on here. This I actually made. So you'd be surprised how just everyday surroundings and labels can turn into art pieces for your memory keeping. 
Now, the next tip that I'm about to share with you, it's, I'm kind of contradicting myself, but it's coming from um, personal experience. And if you would like a journal where you feel very strongly connected to and your creativity just overflows and thoughts just come naturally pouring onto the pages, keep in mind that it doesn't have to be every day, but to really get into the, I would say, the, the consistent flow. My number one advice would be pick a journal that you do not plan on sharing on social media because if you do, then it may restrict your creativity. You may wonder if it's going to be too offensive, if it's too dark, if it's too boring, if it's too bright, if it's, um, you know, too stickery, you know, just use something and have the intention of keeping it a secret. Now, again, I'm contradicting myself because I am showing you this on social media, but for my regular followers, you will know that I, back in 2019 and 2020, I did not hardly go on social media or Instagram, and you rarely see any of these flip throughs or journal processes. So um, I'm speaking again from personal experience because I did not share the need to show off or to post I found that my brain was very creative with um, just things that I came up with, stories in my head, thoughts, dreams, visions, um, just the creative flow. Here are some light examples I can give you that I'm not too shy to share. Another tip I would say too is that don't feel like when people use the word journaling that you have that you actually have to write okay not every page has to have words it could be art journaling it could be drawings they could be ephemera so just because the word journal is in it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be some type of um long-handed writing here is a vision board that i added into my journal um, here are just pieces of you know, like post-it notes that I've collected throughout the years. I'll leave down my playlist of my flip throughs with some pages that, um, you know, I was not too shy to share. Oh, also I want to show you not every page is filled because this is my catch all book that has, you know, writings, thoughts, and art. Some pages when I use paint, I just didn't feel the need to write on the other side. So don't be intimidated by a blank page. Don't feel like every space has to be filled. Also, don't be afraid of making mistakes or using certain pages to just help brainstorm future ideas. This was actually a great example of me creating a spread, thinking about how I could use this as a bullet journal or as an agenda. So being that this particular journal has blank pages, I just had the flexibility to plan out possibly, you know, what my future um, agenda would look like. And therefore the following um, spread, I actually did it. So I made like a full monthly calendar. So this is another example why I say, don't be afraid to use a notebook, but also keep it private. Um, yeah, because even like when I look back and I read at some like read back through some of these pages, I'm just in awe of some of the ideas or the thoughts that I've had. And um, you know, not to pat myself on the back, but sometimes I'm inspired by <laughs> by the old me, by the old um, at that present moment, like the visions that I had, the creativity that just was flowing through my fingers. Sometimes I get questions from people asking like, what exactly do I write about? Um, especially for those that don't know where to start. You can start with a to-do list. You can start with ideas. Think about maybe writing a, a letter to your future self. Sometimes I add in um, powerful quotes that I come across. This was a, a poem or a blessing that I found and I added that in here. Sometimes too, it could just be um, stickers and ephemera that I will start on and then it will slowly unravel into like other, other message or creative projects that kind of stack on top of each other. Let me show you my other spreads. 
If I had to choose, I would say this would be my favorite art journal at the moment because once I kind of broke this in and I got into my flow, man, I was really unleashed. I just went all out and this is when I really realized that I truly do love the art of journaling and creating and writing all in one. So finding a notebook that you bond with is very key because had I stuck with like a hardcover, no, this wouldn't have worked. I would have lost interest. I would have disconnected. And tell me if you're like me. For those that are team soft cover, <laughs> do you do this as well? And I feel, I feel like this is another reason why I like soft cover journals. When I'm in the middle of my journal spreads, okay, sometimes I'm just, I don't feel like using a bookmark. I'll just leave my pen in place, but I'll close it. But with a hardcover, it's just kind of awkward how it closes. If I were to use um, a soft cover, it's easy to close it, at least with this particular moleskin notebook. I can leave it in place and look, this is even, this is much thicker than that but it still closes securely. So then when I'm ready to revisit the page, I can just continue on from that spot. So tell me I'm not the only weird one that does that. Some of you may be cringing, thinking about like how it's hurting the spine, but oh, that's why I think I like this notebook so much. So again, that's the key question. Think about how will you use this notebook? <laughs> if you know it's just going to sit at a desk and it's going to be in its pristine stage, then yeah, maybe you don't want something so delicate um, like this soft cover. Maybe you do want something that's going to be a little fancier. Maybe that looks a little bit more presentable, whatever that means, you know, just everyone's taste and preference is different. But for me, I want a notebook that I can throw around without feeling intimidated. I do not want to be intimidated to unleash my thoughts or my creativity. Now the next step, I cannot stress enough again, use what you're comfortable with. Now that you know 2019 and 2020 is over and we can go out and about and we're connecting with people again, we, and I guess we, I mean me, I'm just speaking of myself, um, we tend to, or I tend to, I'll just talk about myself, uh, use social media to maybe inspire our creativity to inspire us and motivate us to find what else is out there. What other resources can we kind of dabble in? But again, this is speaking from experience. Use what you're comfortable with. Okay. I have been on social media or especially on YouTube talking about journaling for over seven years. And the more expensive, the fancier, the prettier for me does not result in more productivity. If anything, it deters that. If I use a notebook that's $60, if I use a pen that's you know, $50, $80 plus, I'm scared to use it because it feels so fragile. It feels so special where I have to preserve the pages. I don't want to waste them. So with that being said, use a notebook that you do not care about, okay? Like look, I this the spine kind of starts splitting open. I was not sad about this because yes, these moleskins, they do retail for, I think like $30, but little secret, I actually get these on Amazon and I have been lucky to even find these as low as $15 for their 400 page notebook. So check on Amazon. Um, I think the most I paid was 20, maybe 25. And that's still a couple dollars less than their retail. The nice thing about, um, you know, shopping online now is that if you know i know 30 dollars is not cheap but to make it a little bit more budget friendly there's gift cards you can use gift cards i use my um cashback points on amazon and if i have to use these and they're not on sale then it doesn't really technically come out of my pocket also i look at discount retailers tj maxx marshall's ross those somehow always have a moleskin notebooks. Maybe not the 400 page, but you can find maybe other notebooks that you'll enjoy using and, ex and exploring with. So be comfortable using something that you know that you will enjoy using. Um, again, throughout all of the years that I have been journaling, I know that there is better quality paper out there for different mediums, but I don't care. <laughs> People sometimes they will comment and message me and um, 
Not so much anymore because now after seeing all my flip throughs, they're kind of in awe of how much I was, you know, I'm able to create. But in the past, people would kind of just jokingly poke at me and make comments like, oh, moleskin's not the best. Moleskin has horrible paper quality. Moleskin's not fountain pen friendly. And yes, all of those may be true to um, some points, but for me, I don't know, just something about this paper, <laughs> something about this notebook. I'll touch on that in another video, but this is all about how to fall in love with journaling. And that is my other tip. Do not be afraid to use what you're comfortable with just because it's not as popular, just because it's not as pretty. And most importantly, even if it's not going to be popular on social media, I know we can all get wrapped up in the likes. I'm definitely guilty of that, you know, especially in this journaling community, we connect with one another. We want to share this bond like, oh, you journal, I journal too. Um, so we like to share what we are using, but sometimes when you find that what you're using is not popular, you feel like maybe it's wrong or you have made a mistake. You have chosen something that is not the best option, but I would say that's not necessarily the case. It may just not be the best option for them, or it can also be that it was not meant for them to experience what you are about to experience with your journal. So, um, that is that, you know, that is all I have to say. Don't want to make this video too long winded. I'm just flipping through this so you could see that. I mean, again, these pages are not all lengthy, wordy pages. Some of them are just random scribble scrabbles. And that's why, can you imagine if I shared this on Instagram, <laughs> how many likes do you think this would get? Maybe like 10, right? So that's what I'm saying. Like, don't be afraid to use and create in a way that you're not performing for an audience. You are performing for your creative soul. There are just some things here I did not care and I still don't care, but that's why I'm showing you here. See, look, here is like, a, a, what is this? Um, a layout that I had for like my home decor paint. So to answer the question, how can I keep up with the practice of journaling? How can I remain consistent? There's another key. I don't journal like this every day. Sometimes it's as simple as a word. Um, let me see if I have a word I could show you. <laughs> Sometimes it's a word and I will come back to it. Don't be afraid to build upon. Okay, like this, I use this example all the time, but this took me um, like a full day or is it two days? Because there were layers, there was foundation, the bottom layer, and then I, you know, right here, it was like magazine clippings and then I added paint and then I got some images and then I just, you know, one idea just leads to another and another and another. So don't think that everything has to happen within that power hour. You can always come back and revisit. Um, here's another example of, yeah, a spread I was thinking about. See, imagine like if I posted this on social media, if I was doing this for the likes, oh man, you would not be seeing some of these pages. Some of these pages wouldn't even exist if I was doing it for the gram, let me tell you. And then some pages are, to me, um, I'll share you that they're really like personal. I would not want like an image posting online about some of my deeper, my deeper thoughts. Okay, last but not least, if you want to customize or also just be inspired to um, connect with your journals, maybe look into accessorizing it with a cover. It doesn't necessarily have to be a leather cover. You can make your own cover. You can, um, you know, add paint or, or what have I used in the past? Uh, like acrylic. So I'm just saying like use maybe, um, it could be, even be like a plastic cover, a fabric cover, but sometimes just the outside appearance, just switching it up <laughs> gets you excited to use it again. I'm sharing these here now on the end because I get a lot of questions about my leather covers. And um, my first love here, this green one, 
I actually got this custom made by this shop called Le Cow Le Right, and it was actually for my, um, it was actually for this one. When I started really connecting with this moleskin, I came across this shop and I thought, you know what? Let me make a, a cover for it because I just love it so much. So here it is. You see how it just changes the appearance and it just makes it fun. So even though this is technically a hard cover, it's just fun with this leather cover here. But once I added fun leather covers, oh man, it just took it to another level it's not necessary but it does make it fun and it just makes me like want to reach for it when i see it sitting on my desk i'm like oh my gosh so cute look how fun and squishy this is this is probably my favorite a5 cover even though moleskin the journal that i love is slightly slimmer than a typical a5 i like this a5 cover because i can there's an elastic so i have the elastic with the moleskin but then on the back i can add you know, another cover if I need to. So this is also another way to protect maybe your journals if, it, if you find that they're starting to like fall apart <laughs> or come apart, you can still make them look nice on your shelf or to protect them um, through constant use. So this is Lorite's, uh, what is this color? Um, vintage tan, vintage tan. Very soft and smooth in the A5 Trevor's notebook size. And then my very first one that I got, this is his grab and go closure. He calls it grab and go, but I call it belt. Reminds <laughs> kind of like of a belt. And the reason why I wanted this was because I wanted to try something different than the Trevor's notebook. So the belt allowed me to still have room to have a bulky notebook. Look at that. I can still fit the moleskin i mean it still hugs the pages but it just look how nice that looks the contrasting stitching here this is the matcha matcha green if you're interested and i asked him for the yellow stitching and on the inside it was um the old boots leather he calls it old boots and i asked for the contrasting elastic this was my very first custom cover i ever like i've never had a custom leather cover I've always just, you know, made what was out in the market, but this was so fun creating something that I wanted for my moleskin. So yeah, when you find a journal that you just bond with, you just, the, there's like endless possibilities. Here is my, I've had this for what, a, a year and a half now. I don't really show this that often, but it is a favorite and I have been using this as of lately. It's his brownie. It's a brown color. He calls it brownie. Has this nice pebbly texture. And this size and this size is A5 slim. And then again, this is an A5. So I do like that it does hug my moleskin. Like it could, you could see it's slimmer. But when you find a notebook that you love, you just wanna take it everywhere with you. So these leather covers just make it like so comfortable to like hold. But also because I use this as in everything journal sometimes it's nice to have oh my gosh look at this like extra pockets to hold all like my paper goods and ephemera and um, extra notebooks sometimes i have ideas too on like what i want to journal so i'll write it down and then i will come back and um I'll, this one i got to okay i'll show you this one i need to redo i'm not but you know i had Sometimes I have like messages that pop up in my head and I'm just like, oh, that's nice. And then I will reserve it for my personal journaling um, session. So here, um, yeah, some days they're not even pretty. They're just grocery lists. So all this to say, if you want to fall in love with journaling, to summarize this long, <laughs> this long video, Get a notebook that you will love, regardless of its popularity, regardless of what people say. It has to be one that you know that you're going to enjoy, the features that you're going to gravitate towards, the color that calls to you, okay? Um, and also, the second thing, yes, I do have to point out, your writing, 
your writing tool is also important. I would say for me, notebook is first. And let me know, which do you think is first for you? Do you work around, for those that are like regular journalers, do you find that you work around your writing tool or do you work around the notebook? For me, it's the notebook. I pick the notebook first and then I find a writing tool that works with the notebook. Some people, they have a writing tool. Usually it's my fountain pen friends. They have a favorite writer and they need to find paper that works with the writer. And that's fine too. You have to find your own flow. My flow is the notebook because this is the thing I carry around. This is what I'm going to archive. This is what's going to hold all of my memories. So notebook first, and then I will work around and find um, a writing tool. And for me, it's just typically ballpoint. It's a ballpoint pen. Um, yeah, because even though I love using fountain pens, I'm not carrying a fountain pen to the beach. I'm not carrying a fancy fountain pen onto the airplane or to the doctor's appointment, right? So sometimes I just, um, again, I just like to throw it in. Well, if, I, if it wasn't in this notebook, I would just throw it in and close it. I'm not going to take that risk with a fancy fountain pen and it's slipping and dropping and breaking. But with ballpoints, I don't have to worry about that. So I think I've covered everything. Um, Sometimes too, if you do love the feature of a notebook, but you find that maybe it's too big for you, you can cut it down. Some people don't know that, but yes, that is an option. You can cut it down, especially if you're in the United States, you can go to retailers such as Staples, Office Max, or is it Office, Home Office, wait, Office Goods? Those office supply stores, they will cut it down for you. So maybe if you think this is too big, too bulky, but you love the features, you love the blank pages or the amount of pages, you can cut it down. So that kind of ties into um, customizing it or also adding accessories. Wow. Okay. Did you guys make it to the very end of this video? I'd love to know. But I'd also love to know for you journalers, what are you using? What is your favorite notebook at the, the moment? Um, what do you find yourself gravitating towards? whether it's notebook or whether it's pen. What's your favorite combination? I shouldn't even show this. I don't like using it. <laughs> and then this is again, the Moleskin Expanded. I'll leave it linked down below, the exact one I use. I specifically get the soft cover, it's expanded. Now keep in mind, there's other versions. It's not always plain. You can get grid, you can get dot, and you can get lined. I just prefer the plain because again, for me, there's flexibility in creation. Um, I don't know what it is about my attention span. Like I don't like distractions with lines and grids when it comes to an all-in-one art journal. I just, I need it to be blank. I'm weird, right? I'm, I just need it to be blank. So my creativity can just roll off the blank canvas. But which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Which comes first, the notebook or the pen? So I'll see you in the next one, bye.